Thanks very much, Tyler, and thank you so much, Brian, for uh, having me here at the World Medical Innovation Forum and for joining us this afternoon. You know, we've come off an incredibly volatile month, and it's certainly not looking any different here at the start of May. You talked about a couple of weeks ago how resilient the consumer seems, and you seem very buoyant about the economy. As we are looking at things here over the last couple of weeks, and we're going into the Fed raising interest rates this week, where do you stand now? Well, if you look at the, first of all, Bertha, thank you for coming to Boston and helping host the conference here with uh, some of these great medical innovators that you just walk around the hall. So it's really something special with Mass General and the talent in this room. So these are about financial markets. This is about saving people's lives. So we got to keep that in mind. But uh, look, the month of April so far, consumers stronger than it was in March. And so the consumers cont continue to spend money. And so people say, well, they're spending more because inflation has raised prices. The reality is their transaction volume is rising 10% over the last year, which means they're doing more. You, you only go out to eat for dinner one time a night, not three. So you, you spend it. So you're seeing the money being spent. You're seeing the money in our accounts continuing to build, not go down, but build, which frankly poses a, a tougher challenge for the Fed because how do they slow down a consumer-driven economy? And you heard uh, uh, Santilli say earlier, though, that, you know, if, 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 the, imp the imports and stuff are strong because people are still demanding goods, and that's good final demand in the U.S. So we have this tug of war right now, but consumers strong, businesses are in great credit shape, trying to get goods and services sell, trying to get employees, and that's creating wor worry as to what happens after the Fed actually gets the rate structure up, and that's what you're seeing play out in the market. And oddly enough, when rates are rising, you usually equate that with bank stocks going up, but the, the debate about recession, we don't see any of that. Our credit quality is as strong as it's been. You know, the loan originations are as high quality as they've so ever been. you don't see it, and yet, you know, obviously one data point does not a trend make, but we certainly saw that first reading on GDP with contraction for the first quarter. We just saw ISM today disappoint as well, and a lot of those numbers were also lower as well. Could we be seeing some of the cracks? And if the Fed continues on this pace, the expectation is a half a percent this week, but some people are starting to say maybe in July they'll be doing three quarters of a percent. Yeah. Can they engineer this, get ahead of inflation without putting us into some kind of deep recession? You use the word deep, and that's the, they're trying to have a soft landing or a, or a little bit of a bumpy landing, but not a deep landing. Obviously, that's the job they're trying to manage. The thing is, the statistic you talk about, the one that you didn't talk about was the labor market. So last week, I think it was another 180,000 uh, new claims for unemployment. If you'll say, well, that's a 50-year low. The labor force was one half the size last time it was at that nominal mm -hmm. number. So 80 million people working versus 150 or whatever it was exactly. And think about that. So on a relative basis, the labor market is very strong. And that's the difficult challenge for the Fed is to actually get the labor market to cool down. Rising wages, 1.7 plus jobs for every job that's open, uh, you know, 10 percent underemployment in places, needing workers in, in services side sectors. So that's going to be the tension. Now, simply put, from late last fall into the early part of this year, you know, our experts uh, and, and the Bank of America research team have lowered their estimates for, for GDP this year and next year because as interest rates move up, it's having the effect. The Fed has yet, yet to raise rates, and you're already seeing people lower, lower their estimates in anticipation. So now they're slightly under three this year and slightly under two next year. That's down from probably slightly under four. Uh, last, you know, say last uh, November, December. So it's come down in anticipation of rising rate cycle will slow it down, and that's what the Fed's trying to achieve. But the trickier execution here, unprecedented, frankly, is to have unemployment at this low level, job strength at this low level, wages at this uh, high, high growth level, and trying to slow it down with, o with only interest rates and balance sheet as the arrows in your quiver. And that's a trickier execution because they can't create you know, human beings to work. They're just, that's not the Fed's role, and that's our role, and whether it's immigration or bringing more people in the workforce. So that's going to be a trickier execution for